What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Bravo by Gays. Happy Friday. We made it through the week. What a week, guys. We got some we got some stuff to talk about, right? So we had a huge night on Wednesday with Vanderpump Rules along with the the series premiere of The Valley, which I absolutely loved. So today we're going to talk all things VPR, all things The Valley, and then we got some rumors that we need to talk about a little bit towards the end. So let's just get right into it and start off with Vanderpump Rules. All right, guys, I thought hands down it was a great episode of VPR. Now, we start off the episode with Katie and Lala meeting up to discuss what went down at Allie's like astrology night, right? So if you remember last week, Katie and Lala got into it and like Katie called her a bitch a couple times. Lala was like, don't talk to me like that. It got very heated and uh, it was interesting because we... uh, at least me, if not we, as in all of us, have always, I've always thought that like they've been like really cool. So to see Katie kind of like pop off on Lala like that, I was a little taken aback. I was like, what's going on here? But it was resolved very quickly. And I love to see that. And Lala said straight up, like, this is the third time that you've made me think feel like you look at me like I'm your enemy. And Katie just told her like, no, like I love you. Like, I just think that like sometimes the perception of you always talking about your situation may come off differently than the way than like your intent. Like you don't intend to, it's just perceived differently. Now, Lala says that she is trying to get soft and she's trying to heal from trauma and that Katie is happy, like, in her warpath. They are, like, just kind of at two different phases right now, right? So Lala asks Katie, like, can you just be a little bit softer with me? And Katie says, of course, which I love to see. Like, obviously, Katie is still interested in maintaining a friendship with Lala and she is going to work towards kind of like doing whatever Lala is asking of her in order to make sure that like they're good in terms of their friendship. Katie did acknowledge that um, her toxic trait is her tone and delivery. Now, some people may think that it's a toxic trait. I love when Katie like pops off with like her toxicity and like she tells you exactly how it is, even though like you may not like the way that it comes off. And I just love that about Katie Maloney. So Katie did straight up apologize to her. She said, I'm so- I'm like, sorry. It seemed very sincere. They hug it out. Boom. Done. Good. Back to our regular scheduled programming. I just love that they resolved it so quickly. And like so maturely, right? Like they were adults about it and it was amazing. Now. I'm going to kind of like skip over a lot of the Tom Sandoval stuff, guys, because like, as I have said before, I'm just not interested in speaking about him. I just like, I just, I don't know. I just think he's like grimy and like, I'm just like not interested really in any of his scenes because he's really just like, I don't know. I just don't, and I just don't enjoy it. So I'm going to skip over some of the stuff with him, but what I did like was at that pool party that he did host Tom Schwartz leaving the pool party and him like walking out and saying like it just feels weird in there and he went up straight to Tom and said like listen I don't want to be a part of this like you're bringing girls over like to the house you share with Ariana who you cheated on like I just I'm not comfortable with it and I feel like Tom Schwartz Don't at me because I know some people are probably aren't going to like this. I think he's doing like the best he can to like remove himself from being like complicit in anything that may have happened with Tom Sandoval and the Raquel situation. We've seen him a number of times this season already kind of like tell Tom like what he thinks of everything. And he's it's he's continuing to do so. A hilarious moment. I know I'm skipping ahead, but like towards the end of the episode when Ariana showed up at the Belmont. 
And Tom Schwartz looked at Tom Sandoval and just said, like, can you not stand so close to me? I don't want Ariana to, like, see you near me. Like, and it sounded like he was joking. And Tom Sandoval was like, I know you're only, like, half kidding. Like, you're half serious. Like, it just seems like he is trying, you know? He's trying so hard to get, like, the the band back together, like, the gang and the crew. And, like, it's just not really going to happen the way that he wants it to. But I love the effort that he's putting into it. Now, what I do want to talk about is justice for Anne, because Anne, 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 I am a fan. I love her. I don't like the fact that she has to clean up after Tom and his mess. Like, there's no reason that Anne should be like the shot girl at the pool party as we saw her. And then, like, she has to clean up, at, like, everything after, like, your friends leave. You're upstairs on the treadmill, like, enough. Like, I just feel bad that, like, that's part of her job description. Like, she should not have to do that. And I want nothing more than for Anne to just, like, quit on the show and just go and thrive. I lo- Like, it just drives me insane having to watch this poor girl. Clean up after this grown man. She's not your mother. I also want like a full list of what her job duties were. Because like if you're going to be someone's assistant, like I feel like there should be other things you have to do than just like clean up your fucking mess. Like, I mean, although he's probably not that busy at this point in time for her to really have anything else to do. So who's to say? But I love her so much. Like every time Anne comes on the screen... It really is just like, for me, like I love her. It's just like a light. She's so she's so cool. She's just cool. Um, so regardless, now we do get to a point, finally, we get to a point where Ariana and Sheena are sitting down to talk. And uh, Sheena comes over to Ariana's house. And uh, Ariana says, like, how are you? Because people are telling me that you're upset with me. And Sheena automatically says, like, I don't want people putting words in my mouth um, and telling me, like, how I feel, which, girl, nobody is. Everything that has been said, like, you have said it. So no one is putting words in your mouth. No one is telling you how you feel. People are just relaying or people are just um, relaying the what you tell them to Ariana because you haven't said anything to her yourself about it yet. Now, Sheena did say that it was a punch to the gut and that she was preparing to get Dancing with the Stars, but she had a good cry. She was upset for a second, and then she got over it, and she's happy for Ariana. Is that really how Sheena felt, though? Because... Let's not all forget that Sheena said that comment in her confessional about how Ariana was literally her backup dancer and, like, she's improved since then. You know what I mean? So I feel like there's, like, definitely, like, a rift in their friendship now. But in the moments that we're watching, I'm glad that Sheena actually said something to her instead of having to have Lala do it or Lisa Vanderpump do it. And she finally just, like, grew a pair and said what she like what was on her mind like girl like i was upset like i was gunning for that like job and you got it before me whatever but like again she did say that she had a good cry and she got over it now sheena does get into talking to ariana about the possibility of years down the road becoming friends with sandoval again if she's she says like, what if years down the road, like I run into Tom and I notice that he's put in the work and like done this stuff. And he really is like such a better guy. And Ariana's like, I know the angle she's coming from because she is going to try and become friends with Tom again. And she just wants to see what I'm going to say. And Ariana did tell her like, I don't know, bro. Like I would just be like, Oh, you in danger girl. Like, which makes me think that, Sheena is saying this, like, using that years down the road line to really, like, make a final decision on what she wants to do with Tom, like, in 
real time, like more recent, like more current than future. You know what I mean? And Ariana's not dumb. She knows that that's what she's trying to do as well, because she even said it in her confessional, like she's not an idiot. Well, I just like, I don't know. Like it just blows my mind that after everything that this man put your entire friend group through and your best friend, that you would be considering to still reconcile a friendship with him over potentially losing a friendship with your best friend. Like, I don't know. It's just like, what? I understand Tom Sandoval, like, invited you into photos at the upfront or maybe, like, had a couple job opportunities for you. But, like, make, like, a pros and cons list and then post it on Instagram because I want to see it as to, like, your friendship with Tom versus your friendship with Ariana because right now it's pretty much seeming like your friendship with Tom means more to you than your friendship with Ariana. And if that's the case, then so be it. I can also maybe see Sheena being like, oh my God, like what type of backlash would I get from the public if I start being friends with Tom again? And Ariana kind of just like throws me to the side. I don't know. It is all too much to handle. I can't. It is just so, it's so crazy. Like it's just so cringy to me that like you add that someone would just like do that. You know what I mean? I don't know. To each their own though. I'm not saying like, he doesn't deserve friends. I'm just saying that maybe he should just find new ones. I don't know. Who's to say? What I did love, though, is everyone is getting together at the Belmont, and Tom is there, and he's talking about how, like, oh, he just wants to, like, rekindle these friendships that he feels like he lost ever since, like, Tahoe. And, I pr- like, everyone's there. Like, we saw... I believe his name was Logan. We saw that jewelry designer again. Um, Lala was there. Sheena was there. Tom Schwartz. Brock. Like all these people. Or Brock wasn't there. I'm sorry. I don't think. But all these people are there. And then Ariana and Katie show up. And I love their walk up. It's the two of them like ready to just go in there and kind of own it. Everyone got so excited to see Ariana and Katie, especially Lala. Lala was like, I think she's using this as the time she like reclaim her friends and be like, no, these are my friends. And I love that. I really do. Like, I'm happy that she did not care that Tom was going to be in that bar and she still went. And she said, like, I can feel like him staring at me because she's like, I'm not looking around for any form of eye contact, but I can feel him over there and his eyes are on me. And when the production cut to like a, glimpse of him looking at her i was like oh my god this is just like it's too good and that's the moment where we where we hear tom schwartz say like can you not stand so close to me i don't want ariana to see us close together and that's where i'm saying like tom is saying these things probably trying to be funny but in reality it's like no he probably really does feel this way and he know he has to know He's, like, on the wrong side, but he just loves, is so, like, blindly loyal to Tom. And it's not even blindly. He just is very loyal to Tom that it's just, he, he'll never do it. He'll just never leave his side, which, I mean, good for him for being a good friend. But I just hope he just doesn't get fucked in the end. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's, I just feel like he's definitely going to screw him. So we get a moment between um, Sheena and Tom Sandoval. Tom Sandoval, they're arguing. I can't even talk about it, though, because it just, like, he just gets so mad, and, like, when people talk and, like, try and tell him something, he just throws a tantrum, so I'm not even going to talk about that moment. So we do get a moment at Tom Tom and Ariana's house, and Katie is there with Tom, and our girl, our girl, the assistant is Anne is um text or telling Ariana like he needs to go down and like get a protein shake or something. So Ariana leaves and leaves Katie down there. Tom comes down, talks to Katie, and this is the moment where he's like gonna try and apologize to Katie and like make things right with her. Now, Katie tells him that like it's fathomless that he had an affair. She says, I walked away from a 12 year relationship when she wasn't happy and she didn't start an affair. And Tom goes, 
well, we aren't all the same. Like, no shit, you guys aren't all the same. Like, she did it the right way. You did it the wrong way. He did stay that, like, he was sorry for the way that he treated her last year during the divorce, knowing that she was going through such a hard time. She did not care. Tom goes, can you give me a little bit of grace? Katie goes, no. I freaking loved Katie in that moment. Like, she really just, like, told him what it was. And, like, okay, cool. Like, thanks for the apology, but I don't take words. I need action. Now, Katie Maloney is also one that's going to be ride or die for Ariana because she knows it's, like, she knows just, like, how to make that divide. Like, she doesn't fuck with Tom with Tom Sandoval. And nor should she have to with the way that he treated her over the years because it was, like, literally disgusting. It's like he wanted Tom Schwartz and Katie the entire time they were together to either break up or get divorced. And he got what he wanted. And, like, now he's, like, trying to make all these friends again because everyone's so mad at him that he needs to make sure he apologized to Ka- apologizes to Katie. But, like, he doesn't really mean it. I don't know. Like, Katie's my girl. I love her. So, like, leave her alone, you dick. Go back upstairs to your bedroom. And just, like, it made me so angry. The fact that he told Katie, like, can you give me some grace? Like, what? No, sir. Get the fuck out of here. Weirdo. Now, there was a moment towards the end where... Allie met up with Joe. Now, Allie met up with Joe to read her birth chart. And I've said it last week. I'm going to say it again this week. Allie, I need to slide into your DMs because I want you to read mine because I just love. I want I'm like into that stuff. Like I'm into like the astrology. No, I'm not really into it. I'm that was a big fucking lie. And I'm sorry that I just lied. I'm not into it where I don't know like what the different houses are or like what signs are compatible or whatnot. I like people who are into it to tell me what my stuff means. So I'm going to have to hit her up. I want want that like birth chart reading. But she met up with Joe and she's having a conversation with Joe. And Joe is really talking about how like the girls have given her shit and there's stuff posted about her online and like talking about her being like a crazy crackhead. And her mom called her and was like, are you doing crack? (laughs) Like what? I can't. It was just all so crazy. It really was. It was just all so crazy. I don't know what is going on with the Joe of it all, but like, I can't, guys. I literally can't. She is. Listen, Grant, I love that she and Tom Schwartz have like a friendship or whatever, but she's a little cuckoo. I just don't know. I don't know. I just feel like she's being forced on us. And I don't really know how I feel about it. I really don't. And she's like, apparently she's at the reunion and it's just like all a little bit too much. Now, my favorite part of the episode was the ending when Jax shows up to the guys night and just completely like eviscerates Tom. He like literally tore him apart. And it was, listen, for entertainment, for entertainment purposes, I thought it was good for television. Like, was it a lot? Yes. If I was on the receiving end of that, how would I have felt? Probably like shit. And, it probably would not have helped with the state of mind that I was in at that time. But it's Jax. We all know, like, he's fucking crazy, right? So Jax is sitting down. He's telling them about all, how, like, how everything is going. He's doing good. He has this new house. And he's opening a bar. Brock says, oh, I know two guys that can give you some advice um, that opened a bar themselves. And Jax literally was like, no, I don't want advice from these two on opening anything. <laughs> like... He just did not care. He literally said, you look so much better because I saw a picture of you online and you look 50 years old. And then he was like, minus the white nail polish, we got to get rid of that. He was like, the whole world is fucking talking about you. The whole world is talking about you. It was just insane. Tom, or I'm sorry, Jax literally says that like Tom is him seven years ago. And... I don't know how I feel about that, right? I think Jax not being on television like the last few years can probably like say these things because we don't really know the glimpse into his life as to what was going on while he's been off television. So he can act like maybe he has been innocent, but I don't know. Like, who's to say? Like, I don't know what the fuck Jax Taylor is doing. But regardless, this was such a great moment for the lead into the Valley 
because it was Jax really talking about how different his life is now and how he's like a family guy and he's like got this house in the valley and like him and Brittany are doing good and he's leaving the guys night to go home and it was the perfect transition for them to cross over the hill and go into the valley and that's where we're off to next all right guys we got the series premiere of the valley and let me tell you i was not disappointed about it i loved how fun this show was now Premise of the show, we have Jax, Brittany, Kristen. We have all these new people. And it, it really is like them in like living their lives in the valley. Some of them are new parents. Some of them are trying to have babies. Some of them are single. We're kind of just navigating their life as they're a little bit older than they were like when they were living in West Hollywood. Now, I'm completely obsessed with it. I love that Jax and Brittany and Kristen are back on our screens. We've seen Britney's friend Zach um, on Vanderpump Rules like in the past. So it's cool that he is now a friend of on this show. Jasmine is on the show as well. She used to work at Sir, so she knows this group. We have Janet. Janet is really good friends with Britney. She's also friends with Sheena Lala and I believe Katie. And then there is her husband, Jason. And then there is Jesse and his wife, Michelle. And then there is Danny, who I'm completely obsessed with. And then his wife, Nia, who used to be Miss Miss USA. I'm completely obsessed with Danny. I just think he's hilarious. And it's just these different groups of, like, couples and friends. And sorry. And then there's Kristen and then her boyfriend, Luke. Now, it is... It was just wild, crazy, cool. I just, I loved everything about it. And we're going to get into like bits and pieces of the show. Now, we start off at Jackson Brittany's house, get a little moment with them. Then they go over to like Janet and Jason's house, get a moment with them. I want to start off when we get to Kristen's house. Now, Kristen is with Luke and who is her now boyfriend. He lives in Colorado. He's between Colorado and LA. And... Kristen has always had such a reputation for like compulsive dating where like she like literally like will get out of one relationship and she's instantly into another. Now she did state that she did have like such a beautiful home in the Valley that she lived in for two years and her ex, her boyfriend at the time, her now ex Alex really convinced her to sell her house and move in with him. Now, after she did that over the five months, they broke up like numerous amounts of times. Then he eventually kicked her out of the home which is insane that you have this woman sell her house to move in with you and then you kick her out of her house. Who knows what happens because we don't know the logistics of that relationship because we didn't get to see it on TV. But I can only imagine it was very toxic as are a majority of Kristen's relationships. But I listened to Kristen's podcast that she has with Luke and they seem very happy together. He seems very nice. She seems very much in love. And this was filmed probably about a year ago. So they're still together now because they listen to their podcast. And so it's nice to see that they are still in a relationship. I just, I like to hear it. Now, she did say that she met Luke two weeks after she broke up with her ex at a wedding. She thought he was handsome, charming, all this stuff. They ended up having sex behind a tent and like the rest was history. Here we are. Fast forward a couple of months at this time, I'm sure he's now on a reality show with her. He's probably like, what the fuck is going on? How did I end up here? He's like a country boy from Colorado and is not really into the Hollywood scene, which you can tell because there was a moment when they had like a guys like day golfing. He seemed a little bit uncomfortable, which I felt really bad because I was like, oh, like this man has no fucking clue what he signed up for. Now, we... Then get to go over to Naya and Danny's house. Now, Naya, again, Miss USA. Danny, former child actor, used to be on iCarly, Hannah Montana. All these things. They did a flashback photo of him when he was, like, doing that back in those days. And I was like, oh, he looks familiar. Like, I feel like I know him. And then, like, now he's just obviously older. I think he is hilarious. And I'm probably going to be 
a Danny Stan account. Don't at me. Just like roll with it. Let me enjoy it. It's first season. So he says, you may know me from iCarly, Hannah Montana, or you might know me from like <laughs> the voice work that I do. And they showed him going into really like this like sound area and he's doing like different like noises, <laughs> zombie noises or like fighting noises and like just the craziest shit. And it was so funny to watch. It really was so funny. I'm excited to see more about them. This is, again, season one, episode one. They just had twins about six weeks at this point. They also have a baby that is two. He's a toddler. And Danny's running around talking about how I got three under two, three under two, which is going to be hilarious. Like, it's going to annoy me, I'm sure. But it's just like, it's funny because he's like in that dad mode. And he just thinks it's like hilarious. And it's just like, it's, it's, Fania is absolutely stunning. Like, I was just, like, looking at her on TV, and I was like, wow, this girl is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm excited to see more and learn more about them. I did really enjoy Janet and Jason. I really liked them as well. Nothing too crazy there. She's just pregnant. They've been together for, I believe, four years, married for one. And they're really just starting off, like, their life together. Janet's friends with the crew, so she knows what's going on in this world, I'm sure. Um, So it'll be interesting to see what goes on with them. Jesse and Michelle. Now, we know Jesse and Michelle at this point in real time are separated. An article came out a couple weeks ago where they had announced their separation. Well, in the midst of filming this, again, probably like a year ago, they you can tell these two, like, just, she looks like she's fed up with him. He looks like he is just, like, not interested in anything. It is just hilarious. But it's not, you know, it's not hilarious. It's just, like, Funny to see because, like, we know the outcome, right? So the season hasn't even already finished, but we know the outcome probably after the season even wrapped is that they were, like, miserable. Now they're separated. She was asked to give a few words to describe her husband, and she couldn't think of any. Like, it was just very... It was she. He was, like, uh, sexy. She was, like, really? Like, it was just funny. Fun fact about Michelle, which was dropped on Bravo's Hot Mic podcast, um, when Jax and Brittany were on is that Michelle actually used to date Ryan Serhan for Million Dollar Listing. Now, Ryan and, or I'm sorry, Michelle and Jesse are both in real estate. So it was cool like that they have that kind of like Bravo connection. So we then get like to talk about all this stuff between it's just like it's a, like a, a lot of the episode was regarding Kristen wanting to have a baby with Luke. And it was like really like everybody talking about it, but like not like Kristen only talked about it maybe like briefly when she had um, met up with Jasmine and Zach. And she was talking about how like Zach is moving to the valley for the summer and that they're going to work on having a baby. Uh, But he's not moving there full time. And there were so many questions about, like, have you guys talked about baby planning or, like, what happens if it doesn't work out? You guys haven't been together that long. Jax is talking about how she was just saying she wanted to have a baby with the last boyfriend she had. And it really was just a lot of talk about Kristen and her, like, baby situation. Which, I mean, I get it. But, like, I I can already tell that this is probably going to be a big part of the season because i do believe actually i'm not even going to talk about that all right now there was like also more talk at the guys like the guys golfing event where like they were still talking about kristen having a baby and luke says kristen's the oldest girl in the group and has the shortest timeline and that they pulled the goalie, which I thought was fucking disgusting. Like, really? That's the term you're going to use for saying you're not using protection anymore? They're saying that they, like, pulled the goalie and that they're, like, trying to have a kid. But then Luke talks about how 99% of his life is in um, Colorado. And uh, it's just, like, raising, like, everyone's ears. Like, well, what are you going to do? Like, what do you mean? Your entire life is in Colorado, but you're going to be here for the summer trying to have a baby with Kristen. Again, these are all like logistics that would need to be figured out between Kristen and Luke and really is nobody else's business. But I get why they're talking about it because they have questions and want to like make it. I like they want to make the show good. And as 
they should. Thank you for talking about it, everybody, because it really made it very entertaining. Now, a lot of this conversation as well moved on to when they were talking about it at Janet's birthday. So Brittany throws Janet a birthday party. Janet's pregnant. She said she can't go get drunk at Dave and Buster's like she usually does. So Brittany throws her a Janet's County Fair party. Janet loves the County Fair. She says it's like her favorite place to be on her birthday. And she's so happy with the theme. Now, Michelle talks with Kristen to see if her and Luke have talked about how they want to raise like their kids. And she wishes she would have had that conversation with Jesse, but she didn't, even though they've been together for eight years. She just says, like, do it because I wish I would have. And, uh, oh, what I thought was really cool was at this party, there was another, like, Vanderpump crossover. We got Lala, Sheena, and Brock showed up to Janet's birthday, obviously because the girls are friends with Janet. So I just love that they're getting some camera time on here as well. It just made it so much fun. It really was just like very cool. A very good episode overall. I'm excited to see what goes on for the rest of the season. My favorite part was at the end when Jax pants Danny and Nia got so mad about it. But the thing was, if you guys saw, Brock is the one that told Jax to pants Danny. So Brock's being an instigator. Nobody even really caught that. But I loved it. It was so funny. It really is just like lighthearted entertainment. It's good. It's so cool to see them with like the kids. It's so weird to see Brittany r- walking around with Cruz on her hip. It's just like it's been so long since they've been on our TV screen. So I am really looking forward to what the rest of the season does bring. They are pretty much lining themselves up already for like a season two to be picked up. And I'm like not even mad at it. It was good. So for all of you guys that were hating on it, and I know there were a lot of you guys because I did a poll on my Instagram and I said, are you are you excited to watch The Valley? And I said either yes, because I've been wanting to watch something new, no, or I say no on social media, but I'm actually going to watch it. And hundreds of you guys said that you say no on social media, but are actually going to watch it. So I hope that some of you guys are changing your minds. Again, I'm excited to see what's going to happen this season. The Valley, guys, it's finally here. What an episode. What a premiere episode. Congratulations to the cast. Again, so happy for you guys and looking forward to episode two, which we're going to cover next week. All right, guys, a couple things that we need to talk about in regards to hot topics. Okay, so there were some rumors swirling last week that there's a couple departures from Southern Charm. Now, nothing has been officially confirmed, but... It is rumored that Olivia Flowers is not returning. It is also rumored that Rod is not returning, which I'm very upset about. A lot of people are like, oh my God, really? Like, who cares? But I actually really enjoyed Rod. I thought he brought like a normalcy to the group, but I understand why he wouldn't be asked back because maybe he was just a little too normal. Like a de- he was just like too much of like a good guy. Olivia, on the other hand, I can see why... She would potentially not be coming back. I don't know if maybe she's moved out of Charleston or is planning to. I know, I believe her family and her boyfriend live in Texas. So that makes sense as to why she would not be returning. There are some rumored cast members for season 10 that are being thrown around. I really haven't, I've only posted one, which I'm pretty sure about. There's also been rumors of Sally, who was on last season of Southern Hospitality. I don't know if that's confirmed yet. I'll let you guys know more as kind of everything is released but there was also one other story i want to talk to you guys about right before i started recording this it was dropped that larsa pippen and marcus jordan have called it quits for real this time do i believe it i don't know Uh, this is the second time that they've split again it's giving kim zolciak and Corey bierman it's giving leslie and david bedore like If they get together one more time, I'm just going to be so fully uninvested in this relationship that I'm just not going to talk about it ever again. (laughs) It's just ridiculous. It's just like the back and forth, like make up your mind. Jeez Louise. Now, again, we briefly talked about um, the the separation of the Valley. Uh, We did get an announcement within the last week uh, that Michelle and Jesse Lolly have separated and are trying to, I don't even know if they're trying to figure it out, guys, to be honest. 
The headline was just the Valley stars Jesse and Michelle Lally separate after navigating issues during filming. So I'm assuming they're probably going to be done. So now the article is over on my Instagram. Go check that out. I have the article as well for Larsa and Marcus's breakup. So make sure to go check that out. I will say we did get some Real Houses of Potomac reunion looks. And I think the ladies look spectacular. Giselle brought her A game. She looks amazing at this reunion. Thank God. I love Jizzy. Love, love, love her. But her reunion looks have been like a miss. Like, I'll, I'll, pretty much all of them. She looks stunning, drop dead gorgeous. All the ladies look good. Now, we did get also the Vanderpump Rules Season 11 seeding chart. It's pretty much the same as last season, which makes sense based on how like the dynamics between everybody are. Allie was not on the stage full time, though, which I was very surprised about because she's had such a big presence this season. Brock, although Brock was, he was on the stage full. He's listed on the seating chart. But we do know that Allie is there as well as Joe. I don't, why is Joe there? I don't know. We'll see how much more of a presence she has this season. There is just so much going on. I, I mean, you know what I'm going to do next week? I'm going to talk more Valley and Summer House, I think. Because I need to talk about Summer House, guys. It's Oh, I need to talk about it. It's so good. Um, but that's, a, that's it. That's a wrap on this week. I hope that you guys have the best weekend to come. Catch up on your Bravo shows. Do what you got to do. Make sure that you're rating, reviewing, subscribing. Send a link to your friend if they're into Bravo and invite them over to the party. I just, I I love you guys and I can't wait to talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.